Hey everyone, it's me again, Lira's back. So uh, today we're gonna talk acting in LARP and historical reenactment maybe, but mostly acting in LARP. And we're I'm gonna mention psychology of LARP a bit, but mostly mostly acting. <laughs> So LARPing basically is an acting improv, improvisation, you know, like for three to four days in a row, you stay in the character. It can be a bit distracting, it can be a bit, you know, hard to maintain, because you tend, usually people tend to drop, they tend to get back to themselves, they tend to like want to sleep or drink or, you know, stuff like that. And that's when you drop or you meet your friend you haven't seen in a while on a festival and you're like, oh my god, that's you. And you're like, oh, I am supposed to be my character. I'm like a high vampire and I'm not sup supposed to do that. <laughs> but that happens. And that's not that, you know, that happens to everyone. And that's, that's fine. But... We're going to learn how to try to maintain the character for those days and to not go crazy. <laughs> first of all, the first thing when creating a character for yourself you need to think about is that the character should be close to home, not like crazily close. Well, you can play any anyone, anything, you know, but there should be at least a little resemblance with him, with yourself in that character because otherwise that would be freaking hard that would be harder than you think because like for the first hour or so that would be easy you know you're like <laughs> i am lord of something or whatever and you're great and you're all like lord and or I'm shy, I'm a little girl and everything, and I, I don't wanna I don't wanna talk to you and everything. But if you're not like that, your real self would come out really soon. So the character you're playing should be a part of yourself. Like for for me, I would never play, you know a tough warrior chick because I cannot do that I'm soft you know and like my looks are not for the tough warrior chick well you can try oh, you can. I, I tried I tried I tried I failed but I still want to try because you know you always want to do what you cannot do <laughs> like I want the heavy armor and I want fight and everything I know I cannot fight and I'm like, I'm screaming and crying even if I like hurt my finger or any of that. So, you know, but yeah, the best, the easiest way is to create the character that resembles yourself within the magical world or like fantasy world or history world period, sorry, time period you're playing. For example, I'm gonna use myself as an example, you know, because I always use myself as an example, because I'm really a self-centered person. <laughs> uh, I know I need to fix that a bit, but... Eh. So, um, last year I went to a game. I'm going to the same game this year part two but anyways last year i was going to a game it was based on never winter nights the computer game and it's a DD system so there are a lot of races and you know classes and all that stuff and my first thought was like i'm gonna play a draw i'm gonna be dark elf i'm gonna be so dark and so like feministic and so tough and everything and then I was like, but I'm not like that. I, at one point, I'll become my soft, shy self. And that would be lame. Like, I would drop my character. And that's, you should never do that. That's, that's, you, you can. We, we talked about that. You can, but 
you should try not to do that and of course i was like and i don't even have skills to be that character so i decided to search to like research to find something i can do and i was like huh i can be druid i can be forest elf and that was the greatest LARPing decision I've made in my life. Like, that changed my whole perspective of LARPing. That was my best game ever. That was my best costume. And I'm going to be the same character this time. And maybe I'm going to be the same character all the times possible. Because that's my favorite character now. And though my friends were all laughing at me and being like, uh, droids are lame. Uh, but no they're not they're really fun and i found that as a part of myself you know like i love nature and i'm soft and like all about meditating and incense and all that stuff and that's that was my best character and that's what i'm trying to tell you you should research and you should find something you can be passionate about in your character so when you actually decided on your character when you choose your character you need to read everything about that race that class that like all that stuff and rethink again and then when you actually when you're a hundred percent sure you're gonna play that Try to imagine a few, uh, you know, imaginary circumstances, a few like game situations you'll be in, and then try to play them in your head, and then you'll be ready for that. So when you come to the festival or a game, you dress up. The, the costume is actually a really important part. We're gonna talk about the costumes and the makeup later in the next episodes. But for me, for example, again, me as an example, um, these are really, really, really important because when I see a person in a bad costume or like with uh, really bad or just bad makeup, that I can drop them. I don't, I don't, I cannot take them seriously because when you're not putting, uh, you know, enough effort in your preparation that means you're not you're not you know able even to play properly you're not you're not prepared properly and that's that's a big no-no for me so i do put a lot of effort in my costumes i think of like even the smallest details and not only the costumes and makeup but also the location the location plays a huge part in it so the details in the location the things you can play with like little like candles and incense sticks and like i don't know bowls and water ponds and everything like that and that plays that helps you improvise like when you don't know what to do just go to your location and like do something like collect stuff and organize things and then you'll be back in the game. You'll be like, okay, I'm fine. Because uh, some of the classes are magical, some of them are warriors and everything. And you need to know what you're doing. And then when you're talking to other characters and you feel like you're dropping a bit, finish the talking part, go to your location and either polish, polish the weapons, Organize your books if you're like in a library or a university or something. Organize your notes. Or like even do a ritual if you're something magical or evil or good or anything like that. Do a ritual. I did. Like I always do that. Uh, even a small one. Like call for a master, like a GM, a game master. Tell him to watch your ritual, maybe you actually do something fine. And that helps you to bring your character back. You feel more powerful, you feel in your character, and you feel you're feeling to improvise again. 
so that's basically it for the decisions and for uh, improvising but the second there is a second part to it it's your imagination because on the games not everything's physical it's like sometimes in the theater or sometimes when you're like doing an acting practice there are imaginary objects or even imaginary people because it's not always there it's not always possible to bring something there or it's not always possible even to you know recreate something in real life for instance if you're playing fantasy there is magic in there how would you recreate magic i know they're like i don't know firecrackers and all that stuff but that's not safe there is also some people practice electronic magic like you have this wand and this bracelet and it rea reacts when you do spells and it says if the spell is successful or not but still that's all of that is great and the electronic magic is safe and awesome and it tells you stuff and it makes it more real and everything but the the picture there's no effect like actual you you don't see the effect like people would play that something affected them but you don't see like the light or the the trees getting alive or the undead coming from the underground or any of those so you need to imagine that that's all in your head. You need to get that all in your head and you need to believe that. You need to actually believe that it's really happening. Then that's a success. Your imagination is the key to success. And it's not only about the magic, it's also about all the, all the other aspects of the game. Because even with the sword fighting or arch archery, those things are not real as well. Like they're from foam or eva foam or any other foam and they're soft like they hit you and it just feels like 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 this not not worse you might end up with a bruise like a little one and that's like the hardest thing that like the worst that could happen to you with larp weapons so you need to imagine as if you were like hit by a real weapon like you were wounded and you're near like you're near to death or like you know all that stuff for it to be real for it to look real and people are doing pretty good job at it like the other players there are some players that are fine but some players are so awesome you cannot tell whether it's real or not so and when you feel it, your emotions come and if you know you're playing romance with someone and that someone's wounded, you'll really feel it. You'll be afraid for that character, for that other person and you'll cry and everything. That happened to me like five years ago. I was on that historical LARP game. That was, that's a bit weird, but you know. Uh, and there was a character I didn't even know that guy that well before that game, but we were playing romance and my character was going to marry his character and like the it was an it was an arranged marriage and I actually my character actually liked him, but his character was in love with the other chick and everything was like that. It was pretty dramatic itself, but there was a fight and there was a battle and he got deadly injured like fatal injury on that battlefield and they brought him back to the castle and i actually felt it i was like i was feeling it so much when he was saying goodbye he was like dying his character of course the person is fine he's still fine everything's fine okay um he was dying and I felt it so deep in myself. I've never ever experienced anything like that. I was crying for three hours straight 
I had, I think, that was not an actual mental breakdown, but it was close. And that happens to you on the games. That may sound bad, but that's actually good, because you're, you know, we all in the real world, in our modern society, we all tend to, you know, keep the negative emotions inside of ourselves. We all tend to, you know, pile them inside of us. And we are all polite and everything, and we need to keep the social face. So we don't always have the way out for those emotions and when we're in the games we can actually do that we can cry we can scream we can you know fight with people and everything and that's all play that's all the game that's like not serious but at the same time your emotions will come out and you will feel so much better after that you you will feel renewed you know but and there is the dark part of it. You should always control yourself. Like the same as in the actual acting. You should never get... You should never let the character get too deep inside yourself. When the game's over, or when the play is over, it's over. You're done. You're really, like, you're not that person anymore. You're not that creature anymore. You're not that whatever anymore. So you need to stop and you need to stop feeling what that person or creature or whatever was feeling. Otherwise, it will be hard. You know, like I know people who are, who struggle with that. They have problems like with that for real because they, it takes them weeks, even months to get out of the character. And I think that's not really good for your nervous system and everything. It's, and it's easy actually to not do that. You just need to concentrate on ending that step. When you're at the end of the game, when the master group says the game or the festival or the play, whatever is ending, you're like, I am myself. Think about your real life. Think about maybe remember what you need to do in real life. Concentrate on like going home. Concentrate on what you, what you need to do home or like think of your pets or family or any of those. That helps you to get out of the character. Meditate. Again, meditating is great. You know, if you're really emotionally involved in something, meditation helps a lot to get out of the character or anything. That's my go-to method. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's the, the thing of getting out. Oh, Stenia is here. Hey, hey. Here. Hello. Hey. Hello. Say hi. Uh, hi guys. How are you? <laughs> oh, you got something nice. Yes. Oh, great. So yeah, guys, uh, she's here. Come in. And we have something special for you. We're gonna show you later, and we're gonna drink tea and talk. We have something in common that we're gonna talk about. And, but that's, and we'll show you everything, we'll show you the tea and all this. I don't know, we're not going to do this tea ceremony, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, we're still on LARPing, and uh, we were talking about the character. And sometimes on the festivals or in the games, real things happen, like real injuries or real, you know, uh, real relationships or real conflicts. And that's the only case you should drop your character, you know, that's... In the LARP community, there's this sign, it, it means out of the game. When you want to say something out of the game, you show this and you say it. 
because sometimes you actually need that. We had few cases of like people being injured or like people being too emotionally involved. They were having a mental breakdown. So that's when you need to stop. And I don't say those happen too often. Like LARPing is awesome itself and it's also almost always it's really like soft and calm and everything but things do happen and you need to know where to stop you need to sh do this and tell the gms that something's wrong so but other other than that never drop the character what what else you should know about the characters is that people create their characters themselves most of the times. Sometimes you take a character from a book or a movie or a computer game and then you just read about that character and play. I think that's not the best way to do LARPing because when the character is like totally taken from a source, you cannot relate to the character that much that when you create your own so my way is to create characters all the time and you don't know what people created you don't know other people's characters the same way as you don't know other people so don't assume like looking at a costume like looking at what a person created by their looks don't be like oh that's a bad character, that's a good character, you need to talk. You always need to talk, you always need to react properly, but you need to know when to run. If the, if the, char if the other character looks really scary, don't talk to a character. <laughs> My method is to run all the time. I'm really, really cautious, and so it's, it's always better to run away. Yeah. But if you want to be brave, be brave. Oh, what I also wanted to tell you, creating the character, you need to read a lot. Read the rules first. Rules are provided by the master group and they're usually somewhere between like 30 and 50 pages. That's not a huge read, but know those. Know those, those are your saving point. If you're like talking to the other character and they're trying to prove you something you're not sure about, you need to remember the rules. Pull out the rules and be like, that's not in here. You're wrong. That's, that, that's really important to remember. So read the rules really carefully. Maybe make some notes if you need. If you don't, if you're not able to like remember by heart all the 50 pages or 30 pages or something and then you can just show the notes even the master group people even the gms are not always right some of them forget their own rules that happens so do that and then read the back like read the storyline know everything in that world well at least those parts that are about your character or your race or your class do that research and then you'll be the smartest person on that game you know you'll win that game there is this thing of winning <laughs> people are trying to win games all the time i'm not that kind of person but people do that and they will try to cheat and that's why you need to know the backstory and the rules that's when you can catch those people and show them their plates. <laughs> that just sounded really cocky. But, but yeah. um, anyway, I promised you a bit of psychology for this. Not like I'm a professional psychologist or something. I, can, I would not tell you background of people. I cannot tell their psychology background or anything. I just, I can tell you my observations. And in LARP, there are people that usually don't find that much understanding in the real world, they're nice people. So that, that makes them more nice because they're no bitchy people, not much bitchy people in LARPing. 
because they are all into their things you know they're all into fantasy or history and they are all creative and everything and that's why people are so understanding there because you know when you were in your high school and you were coming to people and being like hey look at my new Elwyn dress isn't that amazing and your classmates would be like what yeah I think I told you that story anyways so that was back then but now in LARPing when you go to people and you'll be like hey look at my new Elvin dress and they will be like whoa can you make one for me as well so that's the main difference that's that's how we make friends there and you just need to find something you're good at or not you will maybe just go into games you'll still find friends so people come to LARPing because they need something to relate to, because they need a place to find themselves and relieve themselves, you know? I talked about stress relieving, and I talked about, you know, piling the bad emotions and then letting them come out, and that's what LARPing is about. And there are also people who are dreaming of becoming actors or dreaming of doing, you know, art and all that creative stuff and they were not able to do that because of their parents or their background or they had to do regular jobs just because of money and that's their opportunity to play that's their opportunity to you know be what they wanted to be and i think that's amazing and that's that's the actual thing. Also, LARPing helps to actually find relationships for some people. I, I know that may sound weird, but it helps. People find their love there, people create families, and the children of those families, they do LARP as well. We're not making them do LARP, you know, like, don't, everybody's free to do what they want to. But most of them do, and that continues for generations. And that's what's amazing about it. Because not only your family family, but your family. Meaning, like, all of you are family. And if something bad happens to you in real life, if something... If you need money, if something, if someone hurt you, if you know you have problems or any of those, uh, and you need help, you can always come to any of your LARPing friends, and they would always help. Well, maybe that's not the case for any of you guys, but that's the case for me. Like even the people that I don't talk too much, I see them on the games, and I may say hi to them on the street like when I meet them once in a while if I have a problem they would help me I experienced that already like a lot of the times everyone is really open everyone is helping and you really feel like you have a family now so that's the psychological reason why people come to LARP not only to play not only to have fun not only to do sword fighting or archery and that's actually a great way to relieve your stress as well like you fight and especially guys want to do that you know some guys i know they don't even come to the games to play they don't have an actual character they're like that one soldier in the fifth row there because they come to fight they come to sword fight you cannot fight with people on the street that's not polite that's not you know normal so if you actually want to fight with someone larping is a great choice and it's not traumatic so that's it for today now we're gonna drink tea and talk about our real lives so join us <laughs>